Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech. And if you've seen my previous videos on installing Ubuntu Mate on the Raspberry Pi, one of the things that was missing from a desktop installation is a multi-monitor setup. So today we're going to be compiling some kernels, loading up some modules, and getting multi-monitor setup for our Raspberry Pi. So guys, uh, before we get started, we are going to need one thing and that is another output source. Now, you could purchase one of these display links and I'm gonna leave a link in the descriptions below and they're relatively cheap and you not only can you use it on the Raspberry Pi, you could use it on any other devices that you have in your house like another computer or a Mac or something like that. So, your money is well spent if you get one of these things. For the sake of recording, I am actually gonna be using a putty session instead of recording my desktop on the Raspberry Pi Mate. And I'm not exactly too sure on what um, packages are installed, so we might have to go through this manually. Now, first, I do know we need to get the source. And I'm pretty sure that Ubuntu Mate doesn't have git. So I'm going to do sudo app get install git. And another compiler that we need is bc. So I'm going to have to install that also. Now BC is ready, the newest version, so it's ready pre-built in there. Uh, so all I really need is Git. Now, if you ever compiled the kernel for Ubuntu back when it was Raspberry Pi B+, you guys know it's going to take forever. Um, I compiled the com uh, kernel before for Ubuntu Mate and it didn't take as long as I was actually very surprised it, it was like I think an hour on four cores just to compile a complete kernel compared to like about four hours on the Raspberry Pi which makes sense because it is quad core now so just keep that in mind that it will take a while okay now we're going to have to get the Linux source. Again, I'm going to have all these commands in my website. So you don't have to be too worried about figuring out what I'm typing. Okay. Uh, we are going to plan to configure this um, kernel. So we're going to have to install something called lib and curse so sudo app get install lib and curse 5 dash dev oh did a typo okay now I'm going to list my structure and cd into Linux because I know that's the freshly created folder. For Raspberry Pi 2, you do bcm2709 underscore def config. Actually, I got to interrupt that because I'm supposed to do kernel equals kernel 7. Then I go back into doing that. Okay, now that the config file is in place, make menu config. This will make a menu allowing us to set some options for the kernel and some options that we need to get the dual screen working. If you see anything interesting in there, you could also enable it and see uh, if you could support it. Okay, from here, uh, there's a couple of things we have to enable. Uh, I'm pretty sure some of them is enabled by default, but um, um, what we do need to enable here is we have to go into device drivers. Then we have to go into graphic support, direct rendering manager, enable this, and hit it twice so you see a little star. Then hit display link and until you see a little star also. Exit that, frame buffer devices, and display link USB frame buffer support. Okay, that's a module. That's fine. After that's set, say exit all the way out and save it. After that save, 
we could begin to build our kernel. Now, to build our kernel, we do make dash j4, because we want to use all four cores, z image modules and dtbs. Now you can sit back and have coffee. This is going to take a while. All right, now it's just a matter of um, running the rest of the commands to copy over the modules and stuff. So, sudo make modules install. Now it's going to transfer all the modules to the correct location, and sudo is the only way to put that in. All right, next up. Uh, sudo copy arc arm boot dts star dot dts slash and we want to copy that to boot. Now next is sudo cp arc arm boot oops boot slash dts slash overlays star dot dtb star slash boot slash overlays. Now we want to copy those over to overlays. And next one is the read me. Then sudo, we're going to run script mkkn li mg to the arc arm boot z image to boot dollar sign kernel dot img okay next up on the agenda is to modify the xorg config file that way you could tell the system that you have two monitors and one to go to the display link and the other one to go to uh, the built-in hdmi port now we're gonna have to go to basically sudo nano etc x11 slash xorg dot conf config and this is what the default policy would look like on your xorg config now we're gonna need to add a couple of things namely we're gonna add a second device but let's go through these options real quick now they use the fb turbo driver and the device is on fb0 uh, swap buffer weight um, and shadow buffer off. Now I added the shadow uh, frame buffer off. That way you read it up, it's about telling the CPU to process the image then send it to the video card. Now if you have it off it will just take that information and directly put it into a video card. So it, there's less of a lag. Now section device because we're adding a second device identifier I'm gonna call it display link display link driver FB turbo now here's the important part uh, you have to use the same driver because it has an issue if you use two different drivers like FB dev or an FB turbo at the same time, FB dev would not load. Um, it's an issue with this because I think it's something compiled into a kernel, which I will eventually take a look into. Option FB dev slash dev FB zero, uh, FB one, sorry. And then same thing with here, I'm just gonna turn off uh, shadow buffer. and you end the section. I'm gonna have this all on my website so you don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing right here. You can just copy and paste it from my site. Now the rest is um, about adding a monitor.
and identifying it so you know where to place the screens. And I have AOC monitor, so I'm just going to name it AOC1 and AOC2. And I'm just going to copy and paste this. Oops. AOC2, then section screen identi identifier screen pointed a device which will be Raspberry Pi FB Dev. Now you get the name from the t from all the way in the top of the file when we name the first device. And then we want to associate this with monitor one. So it would be monitor AOC one and section. Same thing applies. I'm just going to copy and paste this and just uh, change this to two and change this to display link. That should be the same way I named it up on top. Let's see. Oh, lowercase, sorry. Then here we're going to define a layout. So section server layout identifier default because that's our default layout now and screen zero will be screen one which will be our raspberry pi zero zero that's where it starts then screen one equals screen oh i i forgot to change the name of this so display link would be screen okay so screen one right of screen now if you have it the left of screen then you just put left of but if you have it on the right you just put right of screen and then n section and that's it after you reboot you save it control x y after you reboot then you're going to get the dual monitor set up up and going now here's another thing that you actually got to do um which is remove the blacklist for the display link device so we're going to have to go to sudo nano module probe d and blacklist frame buffer device and all the way on the bottom you're going to see something that says blacklist udlfb and that's the display link frame buffer and i just commented out you see how i just put a little uh hashtag or pound sign right in front of that and that will unblacklist it allowing you to use the driver again once you put that in save it and then you can reboot Now that it's in the booting phase, um, I am using a Samsung micro SD card, which is pretty quick, class 10, I believe. So the boot time is actually pretty quick for SD card. I haven't moved this uh, Ubuntu made over to a hard drive. I've been running off uh, directly off a uh, SD card. Now you see, I have both the monitors. Obviously the one with the display link is gonna have a little different color because it's only running on 16-bit instead of 24-bit like the other monitor. But you can see that... Hang on, let me see if I can pull up an application here. And I'll do a system tool. System monitor. Let me cancel this out. And on this side, I'll throw a Firefox browser. I did play around with a little bit of a configuration issues. And um, having a dual monitor setup is, is really good. Especially if you're going to use it for a productive desktop.
restore my YouTube session. And there we have it guys, um, dual monitor setup. Hey guys, thanks for watching my videos. I really do enjoy making these videos and uploading with you guys. Um, I get great support from you guys. Um, and originally it started from me just uploading these videos. So it's a place for me to refer back to whenever I forgot how to do certain things. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I will be doing more things as far as Raspberry Pi and my car. Now, um, I am going to be working on my car for just maintenance stuff. I don't know if it's something you guys want to see. If it is, hit me up in the comments below and I'll make a video on it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Remember to share and also subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help me a lot and also it gives you notification on when the next video is coming out. Now, as I say in my hometown, hack till it hurts. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe, it helps me a lot. And if you want to watch more videos like this, I'll post a link right here.